But this is a follow-up to a video I did a few weeks ago on how a PIN diode can be used as an RF switch. And we use this fixture here uh, to make those measurements. The PIN diode is the uh, little white device in the middle with the red dot on it. And the rest of it is uh, AC coupling caps on either side and then some biasing resistors. So the PIN diode can be used to switch uh, large RF signals because of the stored charge in that intrinsic region. And uh, I'll put a link to the video where we covered all this in the notes below. Now one of my ham radio viewers uh, asked me if uh, I wouldn't mind taking a look with this fixture at the distortion characteristics of that PIN diode versus the bias current of the diode and uh, so I thought that would be a, a fun little video here. Uh, from an RF applications and radio point of view one of the more important distortion characteristics is the third order intermodulation distortion. And The reason for that is that the distortion components land close to the frequencies of interest and what I mean by that is let's say we have two signals that we are applying into a system we'll call it F1 and F2. The third order products are, will lie at a frequencies that are 2F2 minus F1 so they're going to be very close in here and then also 2F1 minus F2 so they may be close enough to cause problems in whatever circuit we happen to be dealing with uh, so making a measurement of the third order products uh, can be really useful to understand if we're going to have these types of issues or problems in our RF circuit when applying this device uh, to make the measurement, uh, I'm using that signal generator in the back there uh, to generate two signals, one at 150 megahertz and one at 155 megahertz. Those two signals are coupled in through attenuators into this uh, power combiner. And the reason we use attenuators is we don't want one output feeding into the other output on the generator because that alone might create some distortion. So by throwing some attenuators in line here, uh, any signal that comes from one output is going to see two attenuators plus the loss of the combiner before it gets fed back to the other and that will lessen the possibility of generating third order products in the generator itself. So, uh, so that's what we've got there. We've got a power combiner here going into our RF circuit. The output of that is then going into the spectrum analyzer. We're going to make some of those distortion measurements with respect to bias through the pin diode. So the bias is being provided by uh, this power supply here, and then we can read the bias current on the, uh, the Simpson uh, 260 multimeter here. So right now, uh, we can see I've got this set to a 10 milliamp per uh, scale, so we're running at about 5 milliamps of bias. Now the amount of RF voltage that I'm applying is uh, about a volt peak to peak. So into 50 ohms, that's plus or minus 10 milliamps. And with the two signals, they're going to add and subtract, so we're going to have as much as plus or minus 20 milliamps of RF current. And you notice I'm only biasing the diode with a 5 milliamps forward bias. Now, if it was the, the diode didn't have this stored charge in the intrinsic region, then the negative peaks of the RF signal would turn the diode off. But because of all that stored charge in the pin diode, uh, we can pass that signal through with little distortion. So with that 5 milliamps of forward bias through the pin diode, let's take a look at the distortion on the spectrum analyzer. So if we take a look here, we can see the two tones uh, at 150 and 155 megahertz. And if we look really carefully, we can see uh, one of the distortion products here, another one just barely creeping out of the noise over here. Uh, but they're down pretty far. We can use the markers to see how far down they are. And let's see if I can get this to, uh, to focus in here okay. So uh, we can see the fundamentals about 3.8 uh, dBm or so. And if we look at this marker over here, that's the one that's uh, on that uh, signal component down there. And that's uh, showing at about uh, 73, 72 dB down. So very, very low distortion, very low third order intermodulation distortion that's coming out at this bias level. So let's bring this bias level down and uh, like we'll bring it down here and uh, let's go down to about a milliamp or so and that should be right about there and even at a milliamp of bias uh, in fact we've seen this the higher order component uh, effectively went away and uh, 
and we're just seeing this component here and he's down you know sometimes down into the noise but still more than 70 dB down so even just with one milliamp of forward bias this plus or minus 20 milliamp RF signal is getting passed through distortion free like let me switch the range of the meter here to the one milliamp per, uh, per uh, scale in fact let's go down here and uh, let's, let's kind of drop this down to see that's a one milliamp scale here now uh, let's see this is a 500 microamps of bias current okay so very little bias current here and we take a look at the spectrum analyzer again you know, again these distortion components are very very far down more than 70 dB down so let's go down even more when do things really start to go okay and uh, if we go down uh, here so I'm about uh, 200 let's see that's about 250 microamps of bias now so 250 microamps of bias we're starting to see these components come up a little bit stronger if we take a look they're now about 70 dB down instead of 75 dB down but we also notice we've started to lose some signal power uh, so uh, the resistance if you will of the pin diode is now starting to increase it's starting to act as an attenuator so we've gone from about 3.7 down to about 2.7 so we've introduced another dB of loss so even uh, at this level the distortion is still quite low with a very very low bias into the diode let's keep an eye on the spectrum analyzer as we bring uh, bias down even further so to grab this knob and as I turn it down we can now see those fundamentals coming down alright so now I've, I've dropped the fundamentals down about 6 dB so uh, we're acting like an attenuator now and now at this point we can actually see you know some of these uh, distortion components now about 45 dB down but uh, but we've dropped that bias way way down on the 1 milliamp scale here we're down well under we're about 50 microamps of bias current so the bottom line with these pin diodes is that uh, once they get biased on even moderately uh, the distortion that you get from them really is very is quite low and that's one of the beauties of these pin diodes is that they really look like an ideal variable resistor with bias current uh, with you know for RF signals and that's what makes them such a unique and useful component for RF circuits. Anyway, thank you for watching.